was. I did not lie. I'm, I'm honest. It was creepy. And I kind of, Donald Trump, like, went from I'm like. Glad I didn't watch that then. No, Donald Trump went from like 95% support to down because it was kind of creepy. Yeah. And he kept saying milkshakes. We vanilla shakes. We suck them. Don't do this, my darling. It was wow. a little weird. No, I'm serious. I'm, Kent, am I lying that he went on begging him? In fact, find the clip yeah, yeah. on YouTube. I mean, it was bizarre. It was <laughs> milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Okay. I really, I kind of wish... milkshake is better than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really wish. I all personally, video. I like all forms of milkshakes, but I do like chocolate milkshakes. Okay, not vanilla. <laughs> Strawberries number two, but they have pistachio <laughs> milkshake. They're pretty damn good. That's Martian milkshake. Anyways, let's get back to what I was saying. Go ahead. You Daniels. Purple yeah. penguins and milkshakes. You know, it's Good funny day. we're joking about it, but you know, meanwhile at the Fox News headquarters, they're probably all freaking out. Because... Meanwhile, meanwhile, I bet Jeb Bush has had some vanilla milkshakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet. I mean, Fox News, they have to be freaking out right now. They, they, I'm sure they're looking at their like preliminary uh, uh, numbers on how many people are looking at the uh, watching the debate. It's probably an ad mizzle. No, poor. <laughs> I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Abysmal. Yeah, abysmal. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this is kind of what we're seeing right now is historic. This is the cracks. Yeah. It's kind of like the cracks of Liberty Bell. This is the cracks of the establishment's right. always been fearing. No, I, I agree. Very eloquent kid. Listen, it was like a major defeat when CNBC, all of them turned against him and said, you're a joke, and they went from being arrogant to groveling, mm -hmm. to now this is like a Death Star blowing up. I well, mean, now they're going to We have to celebrate. Now they're going to come back, just like Kid Ted. All, yeah. You know, they're all trumpeting out in there, all saying, oh, this is a mistake. Oh, it was going to be terrible. So now they're like, he didn't win. It's a mistake. Like, how are they going to boost up their ratings? They don't get that they're losing the narrative, and they're just a bunch of idiots. Jakari, you Delicious. started working here three and a half years ago. Jet, yeah. I want your honest opinion. I know you're always honest. Is this been better or worse than you thought? Is it what you thought it would be? Did we deliver, or is it insane? Oh, it definitely is insane. Yeah, it, uh, it, it is insane. It's it's uh, a lot more hard hitting than I originally anticipated. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been definitely a wild ride to see uh, you know all the things that have happened in just the short time that I've been here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty. And you've got you were good on air before as a reporter. But you've gotten really good live, really good. You're always smart. But you're just and same with Liam. Little little, I forgot we had Richard Reeves. He might have gotten a Donald Trump question in. Yes, let's do Richard it. Richard Reeves, Infowars.com reporter in Iowa, uh, there joining us via video Skype for all the viewers and radio listeners out there. Uh, Richard Reeves, thank you, my friend. Yes, sir. Thank you, Alex. It's Richard Reeves with Infowars.com. And unfortunately, I didn't get to ask Donald Trump any questions, but we have Chris Cook here, one of the attendees of the Veterans Trump event. Well, God and, bless uh, him. Let's to talk to him. Okay. Hello, Alex. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, brother. Go ahead. Tell us why you're we, there tonight. Uh, had a really good time here today. We got to put politics aside and got to help help some uh, veterans that really need the help because the system as it sits now is not is not helping. We're pumping these kids full of drugs and in denying them care that they need and people dying on lists and um, you know it's folks like you that are getting the word out that that. Uh, the average Joe Six Pack veteran, we really appreciate that. Um, well, now you know you make me feel guilty because I'm, I'm uh, brother. I don't know if he can hear me, but no, he, he can't hear you, Alex. But I'll repeat your question. Well, he, he humbles me because we're kind of having fun here tonight, excited about Trump. But I uh, like what Trump said. I watched most of it, but I missed it. I, I tell him I love what Trump did. I like to focus on veterans, but thank God he brought up the denial of care because he hoped Trump gets really aggressive with the denial of care issue and the computers that decide to put them on death list. Okay. Well, Chris, Alex hopes that Trump really gets aggressive with the denial of care and getting veterans the treatment they need. And and so Alex really, really wants that to happen. And, I, and do we think Mr. Trump wants that as well? Uh, honestly, I don't know, but we can't keep on going to the usual suspects. Uh, the, the definition right. of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. Damn right. And you know what? Uh, Donald Trump is saying the things that uh, most of us have been screaming at the TV for the past 8, 16, 20 years. And uh, there's nothing better. And uh, I do have a feeling that that deep down inside, because this man's taking a pay cut for this job. I agree. I have a feeling he's good. That, you know, I'm, that's oh always God. the big joke when people that's ask it. a businessman, are you going to run for president? And this 
they always joke and say, I can't afford the pay cut. I'm going with my gut. So right, I'm telling you, my gut. I don't think he'd be here. Gut. Alex, Alex says he's going with his gut. What is your gut telling you, Chris? Um, I've seen him talk twice now, and my gut is, it feels very good about him. And, yeah, that's it. I didn't want to feel good about him. To, uh, oh, yeah, that's it. Good men like Alex. Okay. Yeah, but tell him that go my ahead, tell him I didn't want to intellectually go with him because he's this brash guy and this caricature. But my gut the whole time has been, this is big, it's happening, and my gut is more sure than ever. And my gut's never been wrong. I'm going with my gut. I'm backing Donald Trump. Chris, <laughs> Alex said at first that Donald Trump's brashness kind of rubbed him the wrong way. But as more time went by, his gut initially even told him that Trump is the man. And just as these few months have gone by, these last eight or nine months have gone by, Alex's gut has gotten even stronger about Trump. Uh, you know what? I have to agree with you on that. Um, being brash is something that us veterans understand. Um, you know, that's, I think that's a, a very important part of why our military is so good is because, you know, our young men and women out there are brash they have a incredible set of huevos even if they don't come with them originally and uh, Wait up. but we always got to remember that we got to hold their feet to the fire I voted for a certain senator here in Iowa that said she was for the veterans and when I went to her for help with the VA I got bupkis so that's right. Well, we need to we get the veterans to the fire. Hold their feet to the fire. We need to get the, vet the veterans are the ones that need national health care. Be able to see any doctor they damn well please. Right, exactly. And they use the VA to prey on our veterans. And to be clear, when I said brash, that's not the right word. Uh, just his whole history, things he'd done, kind of you know liberal, whatever. But 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 now it's it's clear. It's it the Bilderberg the Bilderberg groups against him. I'm for him. Yep. And Alex, uh, earlier I actually did record Chris Cook here. And I had some more. I have some more footage to upload later. But one of the things he told me, and I want him to tell me again right now, is about how that there's literally billions of dollars being spent to build military hospitals, medical facilities, etc. But it just doesn't get to the veterans down at, uh, at the ones that need them. Oh, so that's tell right. Us more about that, Chris. It's like one percent of the funding yes. goes to the uh, infantry. I've been all over the place, and I've seen a few veterans hospitals, but I have never seen a veterans hospital where there's not a major construction project going on. At Long Beach Hospital, they tore down a perfectly good building and built another one in its place. That's the doing scam. The same the and, you know, I'd challenge your audience. That's it. The money goes to the building. Go and try and find us a picture of a VA hospital where there isn't Let's major construction. I'll bet you we can't find one. All this money that goes into the VA, um, it, all it's going to do is going to the construction companies owned by people who paid money into the right campaigns. That's it. Wow. And, uh, and, and that's what Trump says they'll stop. It's not down to these young kids that we're sending over to get killed and maimed and... Right. Uh, you know, I'm 50 years old. If I die tomorrow, I've had a great life. But I see these kids just starting out and dealing with medical problems that I've got. And well, let's go it back. just brings me to tears. Ask sometimes. him for his personal wow. message to Trump. I got a feeling Trump will see this. Ask him to give his personal message to Trump. And then I want Jakari and Leanne to ask a question. Okay, Chris. Chris, Alex thinks that you, your personal message to Trump would be seen by Trump. So what would you like to tell Mr. Trump right now? As bad as the VA hospital system is, you need to look into the VA pension system. There are injured veterans like my wife. Her lower back was destroyed while she was on active duty. She went through all the proper steps. She got all the paperwork she was supposed to get so she could get boarded out by the... She was in the Army Reserve. She was on orders at the time. She blew her back out. She was working for Uncle Sam. And they ended up sliding her out the back door while she was waiting for her medical board. She called up to ask what was going on, and they said, oh, you were discharged last month. And the VA won't touch her because she's never had a medical board. And the Army won't give her a medical board now because she's been discharged. The woman wow. wakes up in the morning in, in agony with her back. She can't do the jobs that she was vaccine, trained so to do. She's an incredibly ready, ready talented woman. It's all robots. And, they want to and kill all these people. the strongest woman I've ever known, she's you carried me through losing my and leg and has taken care of me since 2003. And any of you that know amputees, that doesn't happen. 99.9% .9 amputees lose their better halves. Wow. All right. And she 
even more than me, deserves it. She was broken on active duty, but they won't touch her because she's a reservist. All right, well, tell him God bless you and uh, ask him if, if he's got any contact info for viewers or folks out there. Because I'm, I'm okay. a past the government helping folks. We can see if folks want to get in contact with him. Right, like Big said, right. help them directly if we want to donate. Chris? Alex says, God bless you, and that if you've got a website or a blog that. or contact information you'd like to put out there that hopefully folks could help you personally. Um, I guess you could see my Twitter feed. It's at Grumpy Ol' Jarhead. <laughs> <laughs> O-L and Jarhead. Grumpy, Grumpy Ol' Jarhead. Jarhead on Twitter. All right. So, and God bless you, Alex. Well, God bless and you, brother. Keep their feet to the fire. We're we trying. even got to keep the good ones honest. Right. And that's what that's what your job is. Right. And God bless you again. Thank you. That's true. We got to drive Thank the good so guys much, Chris. to take action. That's Thank what it's you. all about. Yeah. That's why I do around all here. Right, even to me, too. We don't need to really do more, you know, because it's real. Yeah. Good job, Richard. I want to come back to you. You can go schoon around, get a new position, find some folks you want to talk to. Tell folks, line up if they want to be on international media. We're going to come back to you okay. in about 10 minutes. I'm going to talk to Jakari, Leanne, uh, and more with Kit Daniels, more with uh, Mac, with uh, McBreen. And then we're going to, we're not covering Chris Christie, and we've already seen eight of these debates. Right. Trump did something different. We're going to go back to Joe Biggs here briefly via phone. Yep. Uh, there you go, Joe. Uh, Joe, uh, you look very upset during the coverage earlier. Uh, <laughs> and, and so tell us what's going on. Uh, and then overall, getting to see the aftermath of the debate, where Joe Biggs is right now. <laughs> I'm not upset at all. I'm, uh, Joe Biggs is completely and totally always stoked. Who is that guy? Who is that guy on TV? He doesn't look like Taliban. That's Baby Biggs. That's Baby Biggs without the damn beard. That's Little Baby Biggs. That's pre Infowars Biggs. <laughs> That's pre Infowars Biggs. Biggs. Separately with all the viewers out there, let's not talk about the debate and stuff. What do you think of Infowars? Because you know, I never tell people I'm going to do this, but I want to know your real view of Infowars. You got a boss that calls uh, you a grumpy cat on TV. <laughs> He's going to give you some friskies. Why? Why am I a grumpy cat? I was in a hot room. <laughs> That's I my know. body's natural reaction to being in 100-degree weather I, I, inside I, of a hotel room. I agree with that. Do I keep this place cold? It's ice cold. Freezing building. cold. Biggs is a good American. He's the only one not complaining about it. That is my least favorite thing about working at InfoWars. The 57 that's degrees. My, that's, the top, that's, one of, that's one of the top five favorite things. It's like an <laughs> iceberg in there. I love it. It's, <laughs> it's all dark. There's weapons everywhere. <laughs> If people actually saw what was going on here. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look, there I've he is. Like a, I've got like a Mossberg shotgun. I've got an assault rifle. i got a, uh, you know, <laughs> fire-breathing shotgun rounds and tasers. No, everybody's got heaters at their desk, and I'm just like, I'm sorry, I, I get hot. I You're get like, hot. oh, everyone's lizards around you. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a, I got a fan rocks. on high. <laughs> Biggs, why do you think they love living in heat? What's wrong with them? I don't know. I don't get it. I, I understand women why they do. Joe, I mean, I don't Joe Biggs, you look good on screen. I, I expect it. All right, let's get serious. Uh, on the phone, uh, Joe Biggs. <laughs> you're out. Oh, grumpy cat oh Biggs. God. Hey, look, whatever you think of Trump, and I, and I get your issues with it, but maybe you're right. Well, hold on. I heard, I heard you say trannies earlier. Were you talking about Megyn Kelly? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you, you know her. Just, You've been on her right. show. Go you ahead. You're going to tell us about that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make sure that that's what you guys were referring to because, yeah, she's right. definitely a... Uh, an evil human being at times. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the fact that you would go in and uh, and make fun of the fact that Michael Hastings had just died and that anybody who questioned it. Phil folks in on Michael hat. Hastings. That we got like millions of people listening, tens of thousands watching. It's funny we're like video, us, but we're mainly audio. Explain bit. about what happened a few years ago to Michael Hastings when his car went and turned into a Roman candle in L.A. All right, so Michael Hastings is a big-time uh, war correspondent. He embedded with uh, military units. In Iraq, Afghanistan, he lost his wife um, in, a, or in Iraq to a IED. Uh, years on the road, he remarried to a lady who was uh, worked for George Bush. Headed up uh, the his, National Security Council. Yeah. Uh, his career was picking up. He uh, got sent to Afghanistan and got uh, sent to a ragtag unit uh, with me in charge as one of the uh, NCOs. And uh, him and I became really good friends over there, and I had respect for him. Because most journalists run and whimper away and cower whenever, uh, you know, stuff hit the fan and uh, we were getting attacked. Uh, Michael Hastings, on the other hand, was a brave, unique soul. The guy uh, loved what he did. He loved being a journalist. He loved uh, exposing. And you openly uh, said you thought he might be CIA or something because you were in, like, 
insane battles where other even troops were freaking out. You said he was hardcore, right? Oh, that guy was extremely hardcore. I mean, 